here this afternoon. Uh, my name is Gene Harbaugh uh, from Carlsbad. I'm a retired pastor. Uh, I've lived in Carlsbad for about 30 years or a little more. And about 15 years ago, uh, I was instrumental in helping to start a group called Citizens with Questions. And uh, that was related to a situation in which there was a proposal to build a uh, nuclear uh, pit factory that triggers that set off a nuclear bomb uh, in approximately the same area that the Holtec uh, uh, proposal now is uh, wanting to place a repository. And our group <coughs> simply uh, tried to raise some questions about uh, relevant issues regarding that plan and eventually it went away. So again, it uh, seems like we're at a critical decision for the people of New Mexico in general and uh, of southeastern New Mexico in particular with this proposal to ship uh, 100,000 tons of canisters like the one behind us here uh, with waste from spent nuclear fuel rods that would come from all over the nation. And they would be stored at surface level between Carlsbad and Hobbs. And this would almost certainly be an irreversible decision. Make no mistake, uh, the plan put forth is very different from that of the Waste Isolation Pilot Project, or WIP as we call it, which uh, receives low-level waste and is stored 2,000 feet below the ground. Now we're talking about here high-level waste and it will be stored just below the surface. The whole tech proposal is for temporary storage. The critical word, I think, is temporary. The canisters would be placed in a 30-foot deep trench covered with cement, but since there is no permanent site for storage, this temporary placement would almost certainly be permanent. As you know, Congress has never seen fit to uh, authorize a permanent solution for nuclear waste. And if that was a popular idea, it would have happened long ago. The problem facing the nuclear industry is that it cannot safely dispose of this deadly waste in a way that protects present and future generations. Until a permanent solution is found, we need to raise some questions. And the idea of a temporary fix is uh, certainly not a good answer. It's a legitimate question to to question the wisdom of continuing government subsidies for a nuclear industry that has such an Achilles heel as this one does. So the whole tech proposal basically is a last ditch attempt to resolve what Congress has refused to resolve. The proposal under consideration is a kind of suicide bunt play to force a solution by calling it interim or temporary. And it will be impossible to move this waste a second time once it is implanted on the Lee and Eddy County line. I know that Holtec will probably dispute that. But there are other pressing questions that need to be asked. Since the containers to be shipped uh, are so heavy that they cannot be carried on conventional rail cars, uh, new infrastructure would have to be built, and at what cost? We're talking about a national infrastructure rail that is inadequate. And what about the risk of letting that cargo sit on railroad sidings across the country? I live about 300 yards away from one of those railroad sidings, and I know what happens there. There's also a huge question regarding who would be responsible should Holtec, which is an international corporation, 
a lot of business. The current crisis in Carlsbad is instructive, I think. A brine well that was abandoned by its owners after they went bankrupt has led to a cavern beneath Highway 285, just south of town, and now the city and the county must foot the bill at the cost of millions and millions of taxpayer dollars. Does anyone really think that Holtec will be around in 50 or 100 or 10,000 years from now to pick up the pieces if there is any kind of incident or accident? The proponents of the Eddie Lee County Alliance plan are suggesting that it is our patriotic duty to accept this risk for the sake of those who now live in close proximity uh, to the waste. Apparently the lives of and the well-being of those in our area are somewhat expendable. They suggest that we should take this risk and yet they argue that there really is no risk. And they keep touting the uh, safety of these canisters. But if that were so, why would those who now live so close to this waste, which is cooled, by the way, through circulating uh, water vats, why would they want it removed? And the answer, of course, is that the power plants need to make room for new waste. So this is going to be a continuing cycle and process. New Mexico has paid its dues regarding nuclear waste and issues. The Trinity site, the Los Alamos labs, the uranium mines, and the WIP installation are part of our heritage. It's enough. New Mexico uh, has no obligation to become the nuclear waste dump for a failing industry. So, some of us here are ready to stand up and say, we do not consent to the licensing of this facility. We have some uh, <clears throat> folks here today who would like to add a word to this issue, and uh, so we'll invite them to come and to speak at this time. Uh, We'll, we'll start off with uh, Al Squire, who is a dairy owner, and uh, uh, let, let him introduce the next speaker. Please, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gene. Um, my name is Al Squire. Uh, my wife, Linda, and I own a dairy in Hagerman. Actually, two dairies side by side. And what I would like to bring to everybody's attention today is, is how much the dairy industry contributes to this economy of the state. When we moved here, it was in the early 90s, and the dairy industry was just growing in this area. And I still remember a meeting I had with a banker at the old SunWest Bank building. He said, every dollar that comes into an area like this in the dairy industry or any other industry turns over in the local economy at least five times. And that's something that's behind some of the figures I'm going to give you at this point. Um, we've been involved in the dairy industry. I, I actually grew up on a dairy farm in Ohio and we moved here in 1991 with our twin sons who were a year and a half old at the time. Uh, we currently have a dairy that has um, over 4,000 cows milking, and we employ over 50 workers. Uh, tomorrow we're going to write 50-some paychecks. Uh, the information that we have is that the dairy industry in New Mexico has a total economic impact somewhere over $5 billion a year. And a lot of that has to do with that, that five-fold turnover of, of all the the money that we spent. So that's something, you know, when we're talking about this whole tech project, we're just talking about money. It's just who's going to get it. And to cut to the chase, they're going to have about 50 employees. 
and the dairy industry itself has over 6,000 direct employees and over 17,000 indirect employees that work at the cheese plants, hauling milk, hauling feed, doing all the other services that we have. So it, we're second only to the gas and oil industry in economic contribution to this state. The reason I bring that up is because even though everybody in other parts of the country in this Holtec project is supposed to be safe, they keep telling us it's safe. We're going to move this stuff from a contaminated area in another part of the country. We're going to go through all kinds of gyrations to move it from this contaminated area. And we're going to haul it thousands of miles to bring it to New Mexico so we can store it here. And if it's contaminated there, and it's going to continue to be contaminated there after they move it, then why are we doing that? They say it's a safer, safer deal. It's not safer to bring it all here and still have more there. We just contaminated more areas. The plans are to haul it in on rail cars. In the dairy industry, our feed comes in on semis down the highways. It comes in in rail cars from all over the country. We have our water supply in the southeast, our southeastern part of the state could very easily be uh, hampered by any kind of a radioactive leak from this from this uh, plan placement of all these nuclear fuel rods. And when people talk about nuclear fuel rods, they're saying, oh, they're, they're no problem, they're, there's no big deal. Well, if you really think about it, those are what helped cause the Three Mile Island disaster, they're what helped cause the Chernobyl disaster, and they're what helped cause the Fukushima disaster, all of which has long-lasting effects on the industry. In the dairy industry, our whole business model is, is very uh, needy of a, of a consumer who wants a clean, healthy, healthful product. And that's what we pride ourselves in producing. If there's just the slightest hint of some contamination of our dairy products that we've shipped, or the, even the potential for that type of thing, it could damage our, our industry to where we, we couldn't even ship any milk at all. Uh, we've had situations in the local area where there's been animal cruelty issues and within 24 hours, they can't ship milk off that facility because nobody wants it. And it just imagine what would happen if we had some fuel rods that had a little accident or somebody made a mistake. Uh, anytime from now on until the future, um, suddenly there's hundreds of thousands of cows that we don't have a market for their milk. And hundred and thousands and thousands of employees that don't have a job. So that's what brings that's what brings me here today. Uh, I don't I know it's not safe and I don't care how they plan on storing it. There's no way you can you can store something like this in a consolidated area. You're moving it from an area where it is already contaminated and bringing it here. So you're just risking lots more people. And that's our our biggest concern as dairy owners is that, that we could potentially lose our whole market and our whole business. That's Thanks. right. Thank you. Kill it out. Woo -woo. Now uh, Jimmy Katia. Boy, those two are tough acts to follow. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jimmy Gadzi, and I, and I want to uh, echo what Al said. My industry is the pecan industry. So, though it's different, the same sort of thing happens. Once there is a, any indication whatsoever that our nuts, our soils are contaminated, our market's going to just evaporate. So this really is threatening all agriculture in the southeast part of New Mexico. And I would say beyond, because if New Mexico gets that reputation, any product, any agriculture product from New Mexico is going to be tainted. And I'm no expert, but I'm learning a lot about high-level nuclear waste. And the more I learn, the more I, I know this is a really bad idea for New Mexico. Uh, we also have, my family also has some oil and gas interests. 
Um, and uh, just like the impressive numbers from the dairy industry, the oil and gas industry employs 105,000 people. So it's significant to our state. I think this project brings huge risks to all of us, and I have yet to figure out any benefits. So I really, I don't want this stuff anywhere around me, or my family, or my farm, or anywhere else. And I can't imagine anybody else would either. So I think they're trying to turn New Mexico, southern New Mexico, into a sacrifice zone, and I'm not willing to do that. I don't feel like it's my patriotic duty. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Noel Marcus. Uh, I'm from Artesia. Uh, I'm a community artist, uh, small time farmer, uh, and most importantly, I'm a father of that little girl right there. <laughs> 11 years young, 11 years young. And we homeschool her, and we teach her to speak and to exercise her uh, democracy because uh, if we don't speak, uh, we, we don't make our elected officials accountable. So that's one reason we're all here is to say, we have 30 representatives that were voting in our behalf to slow the process down to inform our people. And we have seven that are saying, no, let's proceed and let's do, do it the NRC way. So the NRC turned down the 30 representatives in our favor that were trying to slow it down in favor of the seven. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. And uh, this is just the beginning. So what I'd want to say, I have a list right here, but it's basically our lands are not the nation's dumping ground for dangerous high level waste. You know, uh, it's, it brings cancer, birth defects, and death. Those who created the waste should take responsibility for it. That's right. That's right. It would be an extreme environmental and economic injustice for the rest of the nation to dump deadly radioactive waste on New Mexico. We've already been burdened with the contamination from uranium, mining, processing, weapons, and radioactive dumping that has been carried on the back of New Mexico's native people in the Northwest. You know, this has been going on for 80 years in their area and they are suffering the consequences of cancer and bad water and air and now they want to bring this contamination to the southeast area and the Texas border and the Mexican border and where the Hispanic population is a majority. So that's the way they work and, and I'm just so glad that everybody came here to support uh, our future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. I'm Karen Haddon with the Seed Coalition, and we're here um, at this NRC meeting to tell the NRC that we will not put up with having our land, our lives, and our livelihoods put at risk from the deadliest poisons in this nation. Most communities fight like hell when a nuclear reactor is proposed for their backyard, a single one. And now we're talking the equivalent of some 100 nuclear reactors from around the whole country. Is this what we want? No! No, no we do not. And we will not put up with it, and we're here to deliver a really strong message that we don't want it. So in closing here today, uh, there's lots of other people here that are worthy of some interviews for those of you with cameras. I encourage you to talk to the many people that are here. But for right now, we're going to chant together three times. We don't want it. And it needs to be really loud. So are you ready? Are you ready? We, we don't want it! We don't want it! We don't want it! Maybe I can hear that inside. Thank you, everybody. Rain ain't going nowhere.